Uh, welcome everyone. We're here with Chris Plumridge and Pete Lewis from the Surface team here in Australia. So in this time we want to talk about the engineering and design that goes into the Surface products. Now one of my highlights from visiting uh, Redmond every couple of years with the Microsoft MVP Summit is I get to go through the design and engineering lab there. It's a really amazing experience and I know firsthand the work that goes into design around these products. So we might start with you Pete. What inspires you about what Surface does in terms of designing their products and engineering? So what inspires me most is, is probably the attention to detail. Yeah. And a lot of the small details that go into those things are, are completely almost invisible or unknown. So one of the things that I like to highlight that most people don't know is there's actually a micro texture that goes into the paint that yep. goes into these devices. I think if you looked at that, you wouldn't even know that it's painted, right? No, it looks just it like just looks metal. Like, but there's actually a micro, a very impossibly thin texture of paint that goes over these devices. Yep. And that is what gives it that no fingerprint or anti-fingerprint technology. Yeah, but I've never really thought about the fact that the fingerprints never show up on the casing exactly. there, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and there are other things as well that go into it, like we're introducing anti-glare technology into the screens and things like that, yeah. um, or anti-reflective, I should say, not anti-glare. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's something that we designed yeah. from the ground up. We looked at hundreds of different technologies in that space to try and find something that would work, but we found that the performance of those products were limiting the vibrant nature of the screen yep. and things like that. So it was so, too much of a compromise yeah. like to, and, to the quality of the display. Exactly. Right. We do not compromise on quality yep. with these products. Yep. So there will be design decisions that go into these devices yep. that people say, well, uh, you know, if only you'd do this or if only you'd do that, it yep. would work. I could upgrade my memory, for example. Yeah. There are design decisions that go into that to ensure that the device is the best performing product yep. it can possibly be yep. and engineered from day one right through to actually disposal. So day yeah. Yeah, 10,000. So Chris, what stands out to you from an engineering perspective? Yeah, look, for me, the thing that I love is that we design and engineer our products to put the person at the centre. That's the first thing we think about is how is someone going to use this? Yeah. Right? It's not an afterthought. It's the first thing we think about. And so for me, simple things like being able on our Surface laptop, and this is accessibility as well, but being able to lift up the laptop lid yeah. with one hand, right? yeah. lift that up, and the device doesn't fall over. It, it stays perfectly balanced. And that's something that we've deliberately did. Yeah. You open it up, uh, the screen kicks off because it's aware that the screen's been lifted up. Windows Hello, which is our biometric yep. sign-in, kicks off, and you basically at your desktop. Yep. starting to work straight away, yep. right? There's no stuffing around. There's no pressing buttons. It just works, yeah. right? So that's a really big part of what we do. And that's the stuff that I talk about with our customers is about their employees, right? How does that change the employee experience? Yep. One of the little engineering thing, and this is something that we've sort of built over time, is the kickstand on our Surface Pro. Yep. We've gone through iterations and iterations of um, the kickstand itself and the I don't know if anybody internals. remembers this, right? But you know, going way back to the beginning of Surface, the kickstand on Pro 1 only opened on certain angles. So you had two, la two, two angles or three angles yeah, maybe? two angles was an upgrade from the first version, right? <laughs> but the, the thing that blows my mind with it is I've got a Surface Pro 3 and 4 that I've had for ages and the friction and how tight that kickstand still is after eight or nine years or whatever the timeline is. I've seen other products that try to mimic Surface Pros in the past and I've seen kickstands that are loose and you know, they're not, they don't have any friction to it at all, right? And so just the engineering we've put into the hinges, and I think we've got a whole team dedicated to hinges that, that surface, don't we, is quite phenomenal. So it's just those little things, back to Pete's point, to stuff you can't see yeah. that's, that's really mind-blowing to me. I've often said that Surface is the best hinge company in the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, devices like the Duo and things like that, they made some, they've done a lot of incredible engineering around that. But that's just one of the things yeah. too, right? I know yeah. for me, what I'm always talking about is microphones, right? People get sick of me talking about microphones, but they're, they're brilliant on Surface. And, and they really innovated in that way before the pandemic and everybody realized that you needed to do video conferencing on your device. They were doing it. And it's because of that engineering focus, right? Something that I love about it. Yeah. Yeah. We're even in the business of removing hinges so that they're totally disconnected. Ah, you love to bring in the, <laughs> uh, the new flex keyboard, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and this, this one is another one that I'm super proud of because it came from customer feedback. Yeah. 
you know, we want to be able to use, use, this use it disconnected, use this flat on, on a surface, use it away and, and really help that whole lapability piece. You know, yep. on a laptop, yes, you have the ability to work in that small space, yep. but this gives you the ability to work in a disconnected. And I, I took this on a plane with me recently yep. and I had this actually up in the seat pocket Yep. section yep. Uh, and had the keyboard on the ground and was able to work yeah. on the ground on the tray on the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was using my feet to type. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we understand, yeah. Accessibility, it's everywhere. <laughs> it opens up new possibilities, Absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited to, I, I keep trying that one out, looking for opportunities to use the, the Flex keyboard disconnected, but even, even if you don't disconnect it, you know, the trackpad experience has been upgraded so much on that, that haptic trackpad. I think it actually takes out one of the, the major feedback points that we often get about the noisiness of the Surface keyboard, like the haptic trackpad kind of takes yeah. a lot of that out. But also, you know, even the fact that like what I'm doing here, having the keyboard attached and having the device in place like that, that the keys and the trackpad don't, they're, they're, they're turned engaged. off in that mode because yeah. of the little hinge and the, and the switch in the hinge, et cetera. Those little details really change the experience mm. and it's just something that I've loved about seeing the surface journey over the last yeah. 12 plus years. Well, the Human Factors team really invests so much into the keyboard experience. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to the size and shape of the actual key, the, so the fact that there's dishing, the the key, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually feel the nubs at certain points. The, the F4, um, for example, you know, and the, and the F8 key have a particular little nub on it to allow you to know that you're at that right point. And there's an accessibility story there as well. I can't quite remember what it, what it is off the top of my head. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's the F8 key that engages magnify mode or something like that. Right. So if there's people that have vision impairments yep. and things like that, they can easily get to that functionality. Yeah, for sure. So that's the engineering story. Uh, I want to come back and talk a little bit more about sustainability as well and, and a few other topics. So, uh, so if you haven't already, make sure that you've subscribed and hit that notification bell and come and join us for our next discussion with the Surface team.